But I like Eastern Europe. I uh, spent my uh, summer in Russia. And that's a weird country. Uh, it's a country where celery is a fruit. And their alphabet is born and raised in Chernobyl in the early 90s. It's glow in the dark. You can microwave popcorn, just put the bag next to a Dostoevsky novel. Done. And uh, I, uh, you know, I'm trying to say that it's basically just kind of a sad place. I spent a month in Moscow and one day I saw a rainbow. It was in black and white. You could walk to the end of it and you'd find like a half empty bottle of booze, some used condoms, and a sack full of drowned puppies. This reminds me of last year's Christmas party. But yeah, <laughs> Russia today is just like the Soviet of old, really. Uh, but now, there's commercials everywhere and everybody is unemployed. As a measure, they actually started a union for the unemployed. That's like putting stilts on a midget and saying, there you go, I fixed you. It's like selling second-hand condoms. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like putting a bookcase into Paradise Hotel. What the fuck are they supposed to do with that? Commercials really got me, because uh, I, I grew up in uh, Norway, uh, where alcohol commercials are outlawed, because all the laws are written by a 12-year-old Christian schoolgirl, and our prime minister is really boring. I mean, the most extreme thing Jens Stoltenberg has ever done is go for a walk in the forest, without a helmet. And yeah, the commercials really got me, especially the alcohol ones, because I'm not used to seeing them. And when I saw them, it kind of interested me, because they were so over the top. I'd like to illustrate how one of them goes. It was kind of like this. A man is all alone, he's at a bar, he has no friends. He spends his last money on a bottle of booze, takes out the bottle, opens it, and boom! Suddenly everything has changed! Suddenly he is his own private jet, covered in chocolate, and naked Latin American people of all sexes, takes another swig, jumps out of the plane, in a parachute, onto his yacht, he might as well just land the plane on the yacht, because it's like eight miles long, and has golden toilets, and a whorehouse, but he enjoys himself quite a lot, because he has a three foot long penis, covered in diamonds, which makes people come, just when they think about it. Their grandmothers, best friends, and children, he takes another swig, and now he's on the deck, with the one hand he toasts the Nobel Committee, because he won all the prizes this year, and with the other hand, he checks Checkmates Bobby Fischer, who I know, is dead. But the reanimator is scored specifically for this commercial, so he checkmates Bobby Fischer, looks into the camera, and it goes, SPIN! <laughs> yeah, that's not a very good representation of what drinking is like. I mean, if you want to see that, just go out on this city on a Saturday night. On the main square, you'll see that god-awful Native American band playing on their pan flutes like, I like to move it, move it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a 50-year-old couple next to him dancing swing. <laughs> Throw a coin in their coffers and they go like, thank you, one eyebrow eagle. <laughs> And then, there, this is a pretty cute scene, and then you look away in the distance, there's this armada of drunk people approaching. They're so drunk, they're drunk in the distance, and they, when they come closer, you see, oh, this is just one of those fucking Christmas party that trashes the city every night. And there's like this 18-year-old guy there, they don't even know if it works there, but, but he isn't used to drinking, and he's had a little accident. Because this is the night he discovered both sushi and tequila, so it's like this Mexican seafood buffet on the cobblestones. And one of the guys from the Christmas party goes, Hey, play some! Bang over, yeah, sure. <laughs> and you know the dance is commencing, this is so shameful. If this was a rain dance, it would rain sperm from the sky. It's so bad, you just have to look away in shame. And there, oh there is a beautiful young woman. She must have spent like four hours getting ready. She spent like 5,000 kroners on a new dress, and now she's there, outside a cafe, in between an old Volkswagen and a police squad car, peeing. <laughs> trash this city every night. I mean, especially now with the championship. There are so many foreign people in the city, I don't know where to put myself. I thought there couldn't be any more Swedes here, but they came. <laughs> and I like the Swedes, but I don't always understand what they say, but I like speaking English to them just to hear the Swinglish. It's so cute. It's like, ah, don't you think we have a very nice event? <laughs> I guess Eddie Vedder is a good singer, but I prefer Kurt Cobain. <laughs> That's all fine, but the worst thing is those people who try so hard to go for the British accent. It's so odd just to meet meet a Swedish guy and he'll go like, Excuse me, where's the path to the toilet? <laughs> like, what the fuck? You're Swedish, you're supposed to sound like Ikea and Chuck's 
little louder. But you sound like Winston Churchill getting raped in the back of a Volvo. Blood, sweat, and tears, indeed. <laughs> and I mean, the excuse is always that they went abroad for a semester in the UK and picked up the accent. But come on, I spent a month in Russia. I'm not standing here going, Comrade, where is shitting house? <laughs> But if I went to China and came back and got, went like, huh? 